All right, here we go. Sunday Night Live. We are talking allergies today. Um, just getting this out here and then I will, we'll get rolling. So if you're just joining in, <clears throat> go ahead and um, drop a comment. Tell me what you struggle with during uh, spring. How do your allergies come and, uh, and affect you? So, uh, let's see, here we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. That is live there. Okay. Do to do. All right. Is everybody having a really good Sunday? There we go. Okay. Getting that over there, letting you guys come in here. Hey, P squared. Hey, Kenny. Rebel. Yes, we are. Um, we're going to talk about local honey. Do you know some things that you can do about that? Hey, Bill. How are you, uh, Bill? I know you're busy today. Um, boy, what a beautiful day to be out farming and getting all the plants prepared. I, I might, I just went out there and I took a little blanket and I, I threw a blanket down and I laid in the grass for probably 20 minutes or so. Um, I had some running around, I mean, in the house and got a lot of projects I've been working on. So unfortunately today I haven't been outside as much as I would like, but I did get out and like I say, got a little sun on my body, which was really amazing. Um, made a wonderful dinner ready to hear live. And then as usual, I, as soon as we're done here, that, then I shut everything down. So I'm usually off of social media. I'm off of, um, off my phone. Um, uh, and I'll probably read, I might watch some comedy, but, um, yeah, but you know, it's, it's a way just to kind of, uh, let my brain go. There's so much input throughout the week and even the day that it's just important that we, that we shut it down. Um, yeah, Kenny, I, yeah, I, I didn't want to fall asleep cause I had, I had way too much to do. If I had a couple of hours, I'd have been, yeah, I'd allowed myself just to conk out. So, um, yeah, welcome in. So who, um, so rebel, you said you struggle with, with allergies, um, taking local honey, always one of the best things that you can do. Um, and yeah, so, so when we talk about allergies, you know, this is the time of year and people have been, um, for those of us in Michigan, it looks like everybody in the chat is from Michigan so far. So for those of us in Michigan, we've had such a mild winter. And so a lot of people have really struggled with sinus issues, congestion, allergies, because we, um, the molds have stayed high. Um, they didn't get cold enough to kill things. So it, that stuff stays in the air or it gets populated into the air. <clears throat> and, um, so Kenny says only allergic to cats, at least that I know of. Um, I would say that's not a great loss, but I'm going to get, I'm going to get a bunch of cat lovers on here. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not a cat person. I tried having a cat once. Let me tell you about my cat story. Uh, while everybody, um, gets in here. So I had a cat once, beautiful cat. She seemed really sweet. Uh, and then I was, uh, I had her, you know, a couple weeks and, you know, was, um, and it was an adult cat. It wasn't a kitten. And this cat, I was eating dinner. I was, you know, probably like mid twenties or so, you know, just a couple of years ago. And I'm sitting in my living room. I was eating dinner, uh, watching TV. And this cat, comes walking right in front of me, looks me straight in the eye and poops right there. Like she literally was like, and like, let it rip. And I was like, oh, oh, we're not doing that. And that was it. She was gone. I'm like, no. And these people who like, they end up wrapping their lives like around the cat because the cat has destroyed the house so much. And they buy these I have a friend, they were like, oh, we turned our patio into a catio. And they literally took their whole really nice size patio and put this gigantic cat house on the patio. I'm like, no, the cat gets to go. Like the cat does not get to take over my house. Okay. So that's my, <clears throat> that's my little cat story there. Um, yeah. So 
And I mean, a lot of people are allergic to cats and dogs. Um, cats are supposed to be relatively clean too, but, um, but, but especially with animal, um, you know, animal allergies and the dander. Um, and then, you know, people say, oh, they have these um, allergy, allergy free, what do they call them? Not non allergenic dogs or something like that. I don't, I don't even know what that means. I mean, people aren't, um, historically haven't really been allergic to my dogs at the office, um, a little bit, but not, you know, they're always like, yeah, not as bad because my dogs get bathed weekly to every other week. So my dogs are clean, the dander is down. So I think that's really what it is, is that, you know, the dander, the dirt, the dust that gets in their fur, um, generally have a barn cat or two. They're nice cats, but they don't come in the house. Yeah. You kind of, you need the barn cat for all the mice, right? So that makes sense. Well, you know, you've got them working here, Bill, right? So, so, you, so the cats are, they're earning their, their keep. They're earning that warm, that warm barn they get to hang out in. So, um, yeah, so, so everybody's been complaining about allergies. I remember a couple of months ago and I said this on one of our lives where it got really warm. I think it was in like, it was like 72 degrees. It might've been like early March, um, just a few weeks ago. And the weather people were saying, it's really tempting to want to open up your windows and doors, but don't do it. Make sure you keep your windows and doors shut because when it's warm, it's going to uh, liberate all the, you know, the, the molds and the pollens and all of this. And I'm like, oh my God, the worst thing you could do is stay cooped up in your house. Allergies are always worse in the, in the winter per se, because we're not exposing ourselves to, um, to that fresh air. And then we finally open up the windows and doors and now we have the molds and the allergy and the allergens. Um, but we tend to follow this, like, let me stay cooped up concept because I don't want to go outside because then I'm going to get exposed to the things that are outside. And that's really backwards. You really need to be getting outside, getting our fresh air, exposing ourselves to the sun, to the environment. Um, yeah, so I have a hyperallergenic Siberian firest cat, but still when I brush her, I get hair dander. Yeah. Um, they're supposed to earn their keep. Yeah. <laughs> they're getting, lot, they're getting lots of critters. I'm sure. Right. It's probably having a heyday in there, literally in the barn. Hey, ha 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 ha. Um, so so I wanted to bring up something really interesting, though, when it comes to allergies. So where where do allergies come from, first of all? And a lot of people suffer from allergies in some way, shape, or form. Um, so whether you get a sniffle, maybe you get a scratchy throat, you might get mucus uh, production, congestion. Um, uh, allergies could be in the form of like, you know, a skin rash. Maybe you break out if you uh, touch something. Um, you know, especially if you're, uh, let's say you're out working in your garden. Um, there are certain, like, I'm, I, I'm not, a, I won't, I haven't gotten a, gosh, I think poison ivy. I got, I touched once and I got a couple little bumps. That's it. And I know I've been around it and near it, but, um, there's other plants that, um, like tomatoes, if I get too much, you know, too much, um, tomato leaf, uh, rubbing, you know, put, putting my hand through, touching the tomato leaves, that will cause a reaction on my skin. So those are all allergic reactions as well. So allergies don't have to be in the form of when we think of the, the kid in the lunchroom um, having an allergic reaction, going into anaphylaxis, needing an EpiPen. Um, there's a lot of variations of allergies. And so that obviously is the extreme variation. And so we want to prevent ourselves from getting to that extreme point. So a lot of things, a lot of reasons that get us there is our exposure to all the environmental toxins, the toxins in your home. You know, this is so, so I thought this would be an appropriate topic because we've been talking about inflammation, exposure to toxicity in the environment, in your home, how to start to clean that up. Because if once we clean that up, you know, it's like, um, I, you've heard me say this before, titration, right? If you have a glass of something, how many drops would it, will it take of a particular compound to then equal or overpower that glass? Um, I talked about the, it's potassium permanganate, it's purple. And so if you're titrating it into a glass of clear water, there's a certain number of drops 
where um, it'll still be clear. And then one more drop turns the whole thing purple. So that's how our bodies work. If you think like that, is that, is that the exposure, it's just saturating and saturating and saturating. And then what starts to create the illness and the sickness is that your body just can't manage it anymore. So we've gone over to that, that tipping point. So <clears throat> things that the um, ways to help ourselves, we're going to talk about um, in, in a few minutes, but um, I wanted to really talk about where all of these sources come from. So we have the obvious, the environmental, the pollens, the molds. We also talked about making sure that um, if, you know, I highly suggest everyone get their homes tested for mold. Um, mold is so highly toxic and it can actually cause you to be hypersensitive to so many other types of allergens as well. So again, it's about what happens in the body when all of that gets built up so high and then what's the tipping point. So um, just say hit the thumbs up, please. Hit the thumbs up, please. And would love it if you shared this. Um, so, okay. We got 12 new subscribers over the last couple of days. So that was great. Super happy to see, um, to see those numbers going up and loving the engagement. So, um, let me get this document here. Uh, so one of the things that a lot of people don't, um, are unaware of is oftentimes, uh, there it is. Okay. Oftentimes, environmental allergies, in fact, 100% of the time, if you have any type of environmental allergy, you also, and vice versa, you have some type of food allergy or food sensitivity. So people are like, wait, what? <laughs> um, but I'm not allergic to anything, right? Um, now, the only thing that I know of that I have an allergy to from a food perspective is uh, dairy, um, casein, which is one of the, um, proteins in dairy. Um, and I was tested years ago. So I do have, I have a mild, a very mild, um, allergy to casein. Uh, it doesn't stop me from eating dairy because I love, I mean, I'm, I'm not a milk drinker. I love high quality cheese. Um, so that's, uh, you know, I'll, I'll eat a lot of cheeses that are super high fat. So the higher the fat content, the less of the allergenic proteins are in there. So, so we have to think about what happens if you, so if you're somebody who you're like, oh my gosh, the pollen's flying, I'm dying, the cottonwood, um, you know, cottonwood will be coming up here shortly. That's, that's gonna, you know, it looks like a snowfall. So cottonwoods are not only just a pain in the butt, but, uh, but a lot of people have the allergies to them because they're, they're just, man, they just run wild when they, when they start to blossom and, and the, uh, the pollen starts to roll. So I'm going to go through a chart with you on environmental allergens and how they cross react with certain foods. So, so it can go either way. So let's say, you know, you have a sensitivity or an allergy to gluten or dairy or whatever, you know, beans, legumes then you're going to be more hypersensitive to certain environmental things because what happens is there's they, they share proteins and we can test for these. We can get really deep in the weeds on testing. But then to me, I'm like, I have the chart. Let's just go by the chart, you know, because these tests can get really, um, they can get really in depth and they can get expensive too. So, um, so this is just a really cursory way to start to look at your environmental allergies as well as your food allergies and then cross, um, cross connect them. Um, P squared says coconut is the only thing I'm allergic to. I wish I could use coconut oil and coconut milk. Yeah. Coconuts, it's actually becoming more common. Um, and you know, I don't particularly have an explanation of why certain people are allergic to certain things. There is some genetic component. Uh, however, genetics, I say that, um, I say that lightly because, um, 
let's say, uh, let's say everybody in your family, let's say their autoimmune disease is run in your family. So one person has thyroid, another person has IBS, another person has diabetes, another person has colitis. Um, you know, God forbid, maybe somebody has cancer. So the, so, so when you have all of these types of chronic diseases going on, on the autoimmune front, then we have to look at food allergies, gut health, food sensitivities, because that is, they are absolutely going to play a hand in hand role. So let's say it's, let's just say it's gluten. Let's say you're allergic to gluten. Well, probably everybody in your family is, but it manifests differently in every person. So yes, there can be a genetic component to it, um, but it's not going to manifest the same way in everyone. And so again, from an informational perspective, it's about helping you understand the more global um, way of looking at your health so that you can manage it better so that you're not separating things about you and what you're trying to, to, um, work with, um, whether getting healthy or staying healthy. I don't want you separating yourself out into pieces and parts. I want you to be able to look at yourself from that holistic perspective. So, um, rebel says I have severe food allergies and iodine, MSG, all artificial sweeteners, carrageenan, shellfish, salt, and added iodine. And this is, um, you know, this one's really common. And, you know, a lot of people who have, um, you know, and migraine headaches would be the, th that's probably the number one symptom that people get when they are allergic to MSG or monosodium glutamate and artificial sweeteners. The problem with MSG is it is a known neurotoxin. So I've had this conversation with patients of mine and they love their diet soda. And I, I'm like, you have got, you have to stop. Like that is just, it's just a no, it's just a hard no, if you want to get well. And then they struggle with these headaches. I'm thinking of one woman right off the bat and she, she stopped coming in because she didn't want to hear me telling her that she needed to change. She struggled with migraine headaches every day for the past 20 years. Now, wouldn't you want to know the truth of what you needed to do? And this is one of those situations where she came in, well, I just want to see how the chiropractic works. Well, listen, I've been doing this 26 years. I'm telling you right now that chiropractic is going to be helpful, but if we don't detoxify what you've been saturating inside of your body all these years, these sensitivities are going to just get worse. So I want to tell you something real quick, a quick sidebar. My nose is so itchy right now. So I don't know if that was something I ate, but that's another thing. You get an itchy nose, um, something, you know, the, is the pollen, uh, you know, affecting me? I don't know. So it's, it's things like that. Like it's not, it doesn't have to be like you say anaphylaxis. So, so definitely, you know, I, I'm, I'm the, I'm going to be the, the voice of, of reason and the voice of truth for you to help you, you know, make sure that you get out of your own way so you can get healthy. Um, P square says my identical twin sister has a whole bunch of allergies. Also, everyone in my family has some kind of autoimmune issue. Yeah. So probably food sensitivity and chemical sensitivity. Um, and you know, a lot of people will go to get allergy tested. So, um, so we'll, we'll talk about these different tests, but I'll, I'll talk about the most common one. If anybody has had, um, that had allergy testing, let me know. The most common one is the scratch test. Now that's where they, they do these pinpricks on your, on your back and then they put different allergens. So whether it's, you know, wheat, dairy, rice, um, you know, pollen, mold, whatever. Um, and then they, you know, they, they, they put a pin a print or a scratch with that particular allergen and then see how it reacts. And then, then they come up with your results. The problem with that test is it's, that is IgA. So you have all these immunoglobulins are that they're called and the IGs, the immunoglobulins, they are, they're, they're all over your body. And there's many, many different, um, types of immunoglobulins. They are proteins. I know I'm having a hard time saying it. Um, so they're, they're different proteins, immune factor proteins, and they're in charge of doing very different things in the body. So let's say 
IGA is responsible for um, the immediate. So IGA is on the perimeter of the battlefield. And it's like, okay, anything that comes in, we're going to get it. So that's first line of defense. So um, usually that's um, like, uh, like I have this itchy nose. I don't know why. Um, or when I eat um, uh, Swiss chard, I can't eat Swiss chard anymore. Um, for years ago, I start. I was eating it, and I re realized that um, I get. I got like this scratchy, sore throat every time I ate it. So I, I had to stop eat cooked or raw. So I stopped eating that. So again, these little things. That is an IgA response. Then we have IgE and IgG. IgG, immunoglobulin G. That is food sensitivity. So is IgE. But I'm sorry, IgE is allergy but both of those are delayed responses. So both of those are like, um, you, you know, you might not experience something until three days later. So let's say three days later, you get a rash. Three days later, you get a sinus infection. Three days later, you puke your brains out. Um, though those are, you know, um, and, and like eczema, um, all those skin issues, those are, that is all a delayed immune response. And, Unfortunately, most people, when they have issues like that, they're getting ointments and salves and, and baths and, you know, doing all this external stuff, but you have to clean up the internal environment and stop putting the insult inside of it. So, um, Coke and Pepsi probably have iodine. You're allergic to Coke and Pepsi again. Yeah. Not a big loss there. Um, you have some peanut issues, peanut butter, M&Ms makes my throat tight. Yeah. Okay. So is it the peanut? Or is it the dye? Because we've talked a lot about the dyes. The food dyes can cause allergies, and and um, and you know, you again, you don't pay attention to it. Um, my daughter is latex rasp, but also mint severe allergy, but they could not scratch test for it. How'd you figure it out then? Um, IGA. Yes, there was an IGA grocery store. Yes, <laughs> yes. Immunoglobulin A. Yes. So if you've had the scratch test, I really encourage you to do, um, I, I don't even do the, the, I don't do IgA. It's useless to me because most people know when they have an immediate response to something again, um, sore throat, immediate headache, itchy nose, scratchy throat, rash, um, stomach ache. You know, as soon as I eat X, Y, Z, I immediately get a stomach ache. Those are all, I, it's all IgA responses. So. Um, so if we start to, um, look at the IgG and the IgE, what's important about having both of those tests is that now I, I test for IgG, um, through a, a finger, a finger, <laughs> a finger poke, um, because I used to be able to send people down to the hospital to get blood draws. And they, de they decided we're not doing any more, um, outside blood draws. You need a blood draw to do IgE, which is your food allergy. So the difference between the food allergy and the food sensitivity, both delayed, but the um, you can have an allergy to something, but it won't show up on the sensitivity portion. So let's say you test for almonds and you're only doing the sensitivity. This is where having somebody like myself having the clinical eye and the clinical um, wherewithal to be able to say, yeah, but you know, I, there's enough symptomatology there that I can look at it and go, maybe we should avoid this, even though it's showing up negative. So it can be negative on your food sensitivity, positive on the food allergy. It can be positive on the food allergy, negative on the sensitivity. So that's why it's really important to have both. Um, I actually have found a medical doctor just right in my town, just a, um, about a half mile from my office. And he, he was gracious enough to tell me that I can send my people to him and he will do a blood draw for me. So, um, so I'm back in the blood draw game, which I'm really excited about. I think that's going to be, you know, it's going to be a big um, game changer for me. So um, just to be more, um, more specific with everybody. So, uh, you know, it, a lot of times to, um, you know, I had somebody, somebody emailed me, wanted to know if I had experience with, um, 
food disorder, you know, um, eating disorders. I forgot. You know, it might have been like anorexia, bulimia, something like that, but any of those, right? Um, those are the types of things where, uh, and there's there's a few things that I can look, I can look at you, I can take your history and I can go, yeah, we should we probably should avoid this. Um, and or let's start here. But then a lot of times I'm not gonna guess. You know, if you come to me, sit, tell me you got a 20 year history of disordered eating, we're not guessing at any of that. Um, I am really good, but I want to know exactly what to do so we can hit the ground running so we can be successful with your, with your, um, with your care. So, um, rebel says I can eat any other M&Ms, but yes to the red dye allergy. Yeah. And I wonder if that was the, cause was it the red dye that they just finally took off of the gen generally recognized as safe list? Yeah. Immunoglobulin. You spelled it right in everything, Kenny. Nice job. Shamrock shakes, her whole face swells up and she can't breathe. It's only the mint things that cause it. Um, yeah, but a shamrock shape isn't even like, there's nothing real in there. There's probably a bunch of hydrogenated oil in there too. Um, what if she just eats a piece of mint like from the garden? Does that do the same thing? And a lot of people are allergic to mint. They, they certainly do, um, uh, do have issues with that. Um, Bill says, the only thing that ever bothers me is poison ivy. A little extra vitamin C seems to help clean it up. That's a really great insight. Yeah. And good that you, that you figured that out, right? Um, I won the fourth grade spelling bee. Nice job. So I, I want to go through the cross reactivity list with you. Um, now you're going to find this really interesting. And um, unfortunately, I can't drop this link. So if you would like this document, um, <laughs> I, I don't mind Kenny's, the, the brown on his nose. <laughs> um, hold on. I'm going to put my email in here again, because if you want me to email you this document, um, just go ahead and shoot me an email and put, um, allergy, um, allergy chart. Just put allergy chart in the subject line. And then I will be happy to email this over because it's pretty cool. Um, yes, I have mint ground cover at the cabin. She swells when she visits. She won't eat or drink mint. And toothpaste is also reaction causing. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of people have, I don't know. And that, that's the thing too. Like mint is, uh, it's a cannabinoid. It's um, it's anti-inflammatory. I mean, unless you have an allergy to it. It's this, this is too where you get into that weird paradox of people who um, have allergies to healthy things. And, you know, I've had people come to me who have a pretty healthy diet, you know, relatively speaking. And I'll say, well, you know, um, you eat, chicken salad every day. Maybe you're allergic to chicken or you've got, you're having hummus. Maybe you're allergic to, um, the like the legumes or the sesame in that. So it's quite likely that even healthy things you can have an allergy or sensitivity to. Um, so don't discount that. So, all right, so here we go. Here's our, um, our environmental allergens. And I'm going to go down that, I'm going to go down that list. And then I'm going to tell you which foods these allergens are going to cross react with. You know what? Hold on. I forgot that I have the power to share a screen. Let me do that. Hold on. Let's do that. All right. Wouldn't that be cool? You guys can come in here and closing out my windows so you guys don't make fun of me. Who, who is, uh, who's with me on the, uh, on having a million windows open. <laughs> God, I loved York peppermint patties and, uh, junior mints when I was a kid. Uh, let's see. Okay. Present share screen. I don't do this often. So let's see. Chrome tab. Okay, window entire screen there. Okay, are you ready? Okay. Yeah, I don't know why that goes into a million um a million things there, but okay, so now I can do you have six open. Oh good. I had about 26 open. All right. 
<laughs> I plead the fifth. I know. <laughs> it's, I keep them open. They're like reminders, right? They're my, they're like sticky tabs, uh, your sticky notes of, I need to get, I need to go to this, get this done, this done, this, done, you know? So, so yeah, they're my reminders. Um, okay. Can you guys see this? Let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Tell me if you can see this document. Like I say, I don't, I don't always, um, I don't always do this. So I don't, uh, I don't know if I'm doing it properly. Right. Can you see it? Place cards. Yes. They're place card holders for sure. All right. Okay. All right. Tell me you can see this. And if you can't see it, tell me you can't see it. Okay. It says I'm sharing my screen. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, cause what's weird is, oh, there we go. I do see it. I see it now behind. Okay. All right. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So this is really cool. So now here's our environmental allergens. And so all grasses. Now, if you are allergic to, or have a sensitivity, um, go to full screen. Okay. Hold on. There you go. Didn't really, uh, let me, um, there we go. That's what I'm trying to do. Is that better, Kenny? Cause I want to do that. So I, I can do that. Ernie Marty. How are you? My friend. Nice to see you in here. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Did I do it? Did I do it? P squared? Okay. Let's see. Ernie. I'm so glad you're here hanging out with us. Ernie is a good friend of mine. I know him through chiropractic. Um, he's a good dude. And we have not spoken in way too many years. Uh, let's see. Okay. There. That's perfect. Okay, good. All right. There we go. So now I'm trying to do this because I want I'm trying to see your chat as I do this. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Um, let's see. Okay. So you're full screen. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So we have all grasses. So if you have any kind of sensitivity or allergy to any of the grasses, um, you may also have some kind of sensitivity to legumes. So the, you know, it's any kind of like bean, um, lentils, um, uh, that uh, peas, apples, carrots, celery, any kind of grains, cottonseed. Um, and then, you know, legumes are, are any kind of bean. So, you know, um, uh, pinto beans, navy beans, again, and then you've got your peas in there. So your, your split peas, which I'm like, I don't know if that's a legume, you know, that's a, a tough, um, uh, I, I don't, I don't know the answer to, you know, sometimes it's like the difference between a grain and a seed you know, anyway, we're not going to split hairs here. So you get the idea. So if you have any kind of allergy to grasses, so let's say you're outside and um, you cut the grass or it's fresh cut grass, your neighbor's cutting the grass and you start to get a little bit of itchy scratchy and you go and you run and you take a Zyrtec, which is one of the worst things you can possibly do. And I'll tell you why in a moment. Um, Cause I also want to talk about what we can be you know, doing for this different things we can do. So um, the first thing here that we're going to talk about is doing an elimination diet. So when these particular um, pollens, grasses, um, allergens, when they're high uh, in the environment, you're going to want to look at these foods and maybe you eat an apple every day, right? I know an apple day keeps the doctor away, but maybe you eat an apple every day. Um, maybe when the grasses are high, you want to avoid apples for a couple, three days. Um, hey there, Howie, welcome in. Nice to see you, my friend. Everybody say hi to food forest, permaculture. Um, <laughs> Kenny, I love split peas. Oh my gosh, split peas with with a good uh, ham hock in it. So yummy. So now um, ragweed, weeds and ragweed, we're going to start getting into some ragweed here. So these are, um, and again, when it says may cross react with foods, this means that they, they have similar proteins so that your body will look at the protein from uh, the, or the allergen coming in from the ragweed. And it will then look at these if you are ingesting them and it will, it will look similar enough 
that it can cause the same kind of reaction. So you, you want to start looking at, okay, what's, what's my insult here? And what are the foods specific to that? So like, um, rebel, like your, your daughter is allergic to mint. So does she, um, have uh, trouble when ragweed, you know, when ragweed starts to fly? Um, you know, be curious to know that. So then you want to, you really want to go across this whole thing and start to just eliminate all of this. And, um, and then that, that is one way to make sure that you are not having such a, um, a reaction when the ragweed gets high. Okay. Um, King Puba, how are you? Nice to see you. Thanks for joining in. Um, you found something wrong. What's wrong with me? No, nothing's wrong with me, Kenny. <laughs> what do I have an, I don't have an allergy. Do I, um, there you go. Sorry. It's highlighting that. Okay, here we go. All right. So, um, mugwort and sage. Um, I don't know when the mugwort starts to fly, but then it can cross rea. Oh, I like split pea soup. Oh my God. I love split pea, pea soup. Um, so now we have cross reacting with celery, coriander, which is, um, um, cilantro. So cilantro, coriander, chamomile, um, nightshades, nightshade family of plants, including tobacco. So nightshades are going to be your tomatoes, your potatoes, eggplant, things like that. Um, so paying attention to that. <laughs> Thanks, Kenny. Kenny, I was, um, I made cheese today. I was making ricotta cheese and I was stirring milk on the stove. And I thought of you, I almost did a video to say I was, I was bringing milk to a boil and it wasn't water, but, um, and then marsh elder, I'm not really sure what that is. You know, these are probably regional seasonal things. Um, you know, depends on, depending on the area so that we have wheat there. So if you have any kind of, um, wheat allergy, wheat sensitivity, gluten, any of that, that can then be responding to there. So, um, amaranth, um, pork. Um, so if you have a pork allergy, uh, and, and, am, you know, we don't really have an amaranth doesn't really grow around here unless you're like, I mean, you could grow it. I think it does grow wild. Um, but it's not, uh, not real common for, for us, but you know, maybe in your area. Um, <laughs> yeah, skip the nightshades for sure. Howie. Um, and I love, you know, I love the nightshades. I, again, I don't personally have an issue. So, you know, a lot of people, um, I had some criticism when I, when I did it, my tomato video, um, cause I didn't address the the, the nightshade aspect of it. But, you know, if you don't have an issue with nightshades, tomatoes are an absolute superfood. So, um, you know, this is, in, and there's like, there's this really famous health guru out there. Um, and he's like, you know, broccoli is gross. Like he's just, this is very inflammatory. And he's like, nobody should ever eat kale and not, you know, and I'm like, dude, I, you know, I, I love my vegetables. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to be eating my vegetables. So, um, you know, because I mean, they're good for my body, uh, and I feel great when I eat them. So, um, amaranth is a grain, Kenny. It's, it's really beautiful. Actually. It's, um, oh, it grows like it's kind of uh, dark red, dark red, kind of like maroonish maybe. Um, and it just grows these big plumes, uh, and it's a grain. So, um, so you can, you can actually harvest the, uh, the plume and take all of the seeds off and then, um, you can, uh, you know, grind it or mill it and make it into amaranth flour. And then you can use that for, uh, different, um, for different, um, things in, in cooking. So, um, let's see before you say it, Google is your friend, Kenny. <laughs> Uh, let's see. All right. Girl, we're growing it in the garden. Oh, okay. Good, good. Yeah. So King Puba is growing it. Um, yeah, I would like to grow it. I know it's, you know, can be pretty beneficial to, um, to different, um, you know, attracting different, different things into your garden. Um, it's also called prostate pigweed. 
Okay. <laughs> love lies bleeding. Love lies bleeding in my hand. Yeah, I'm off key. Um, I'm not warmed up. <laughs> okay, so birch and alder. You may have um, an issue with hazelnut, apple, carrot, celery, orange, potato, beef, and soy. And you can see the grasses. You can see how now we're starting to cross-react up here. So you may have been told, maybe you're told, oh, you're allergic to grass. And this is also why I don't do environmental allergy testing because I don't care about this. You're, I, I need you to be outside getting fresh air. So if I can find these and start to reduce these and get your body fixed from uh, eliminating these and get your gut repaired so that you can start to eat some of this, but less of it, you're just by nature of, of the way the body heals, you're going to be less sensitive to things in the environment, you know? And I mean, I've had people say, oh yeah, I don't even go outside in the summer because I'm allergic to the blah, blah, blah. Go outside, get <laughs> fresh air. Um, so um, cedar, milk, mint, elm, chestnut, egg, apple. There's our chestnuts, Bill. Ugh, that would be horrible if we were allergic to chestnuts. Um, oak, so that could be corn, banana, um, pecan, lettuce, uh, poison oak, ivy, and sumac, um, pork and black pepper. Um, pigweed is also pork, so pork is in here a lot. Molds and uh, fungals, that's supposed to be a G, fungal spores, so yeast, mushrooms, um, aged cheeses, coffee. And one of the reasons coffee is in here is because coffee is, um, it's moldy. It's, you know, the, these, the way a lot of coffee is made is it comes in, it's, um, you know, it has moisture on it, and then it sits and it molds, and then they just take it and then they throw it into the roaster. So now we roast the mold onto the coffee bean. And so a lot of people um, uh, will have, you know, if they have mold sensitivity, they won't be able to have coffee or certain types of coffee. So that's really important to know. Also mold and yeast go together. So yeast is going to be your breads, your glutens, you know, anything that is, um, you know, uh, um, anything that utilizes yeast. So, um, yeah, mostly your, mostly your breads, but mushrooms also because they are fungal hard cheeses tend to, uh, you know, think of like, um, you know, they've been aged and so they tend to have mold in them naturally occurring. And so that can affect this. You may not taste it. I mean, it's like blue cheese, right? Is all mold and how delicious is it? Um, Kenny, you probably don't like blue cheese. I'm going to guess, do you? Uh, roasted mold, right? I know exactly. Um, now a lot of people have a latex allergy. So if you have a latex allergy, um, then that can be papaya, banana, kiwi, avocado, peanut, fig, melon, chestnut, pistachio, peach, pineapple, and pear. I mean, that's a that's a big list right there. So if you're allergic to latex, you might want to take this list and, um, and you could screenshot this, you guys, um, do that if you wanted to. And, um, and then of course, dust mites, shellfish, mollusks, mollusks, and crustaceans. So a lot of people have allergies to shellfish anyway, which then means they're probably going to be more sensitive to dust mites. So, you know, you want to, this is the time of year, like take all your blankets and your pillows. Um, I'm starting to run my pillows through the, um, the washing machine, like my little throw pillows, run them through the washer, throw them, you know, throw them in the dryer, uh, and just get them, uh, sanitized if you will. So, uh, and then take your blankets, let them hang outside, get, let them, you know, air out. Um, and that's one of the best ways uh, to to um, eliminate the dust mites. So, so that's a big stop sharing there. So that's a um, a, a big part of um, environmental allergies is it's not just the environment; it's the environment inside your body. And so, food plays a huge role in that, and then how your body responds to the environment for these spring allergies. So, um, oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> I know. I love blue cheese. 
Um, mold, yeast, and fungus loves humans that eat sugar. Yes. So these are my, I call them my carbivores. And um, my, my carbivores, they, um, molds, yeast, and fungus cause such disruption in the gut. And so people who have cravings, whether bread or sugars, um, that is a signal coming from your gut. That's your, that's those are the bugs telling your brain to make you go get sugar so that they can eat. So one of the best things you can do if you've had mold sensitivity, mold toxicity, um, yeast, fungus, candida, anything like that is starve those little buggers. Anytime I'm doing, doing an elimination diet with any of my patients, um, the elimination diet is there for a reason. We are starving the bad bugs and not allowing them to survive. And so we want to get that die off. We want to reestablish good bacteria in your gut, and then you'll start to just start to feel better. So, um, Yes. Extra crumbles, please. I know I love blue cheese. Um, just bought some Mexican crumble cheese. Is that the, um, I wonder if that's like the Spanish, we use Spanish cheese a lot. My mom would call it Syrian cheese, um, cause they sell it in the Arabic stores. So, um, and I actually just bought some rennet tablets to make Syrian cheese, which is, um, similar. So, um, where is Corky? Yeah. Uh, we need, we need Corky in here. We need Joe in here. Uh, let's see. I haven't seen Corky on in a long time. Um, yes. I love blue cheese. Uh, you're back on the plus side of things. Wrong with you. Good. I know I, if I strike one off the list, then I could, don't I have enough on the good side to offset the one, the one thing. Oh, okay. She's making fish tacos. That sounds really good. I'll be right over for dinner. I was thinking about you guys. Um, I was, I was like, oh, I should run down there, take a visit. And, uh, cause you guys were right in the path of the, of the, um, uh, the eclipse, weren't you? Um, okay. So what can we do about it? So one of the things is you're going to pay attention and also what kind of tacos is she making? Um, <laughs> we, we must know. This is also a food channel, right? It's health. It's food. Food goes along with health, right? Um, and um, <laughs> we were, yeah. My daughter went down to uh, Toledo with her friend. They said it was the most amazing thing they've ever seen. So um, let's see. Let me send this in here. Please hit the thumbs up. Uh, da, da, da. There. <laughs> um okay okay beef tacos that's okay that'll work all right where was i all right so we're going to start with the elimination because you know oftentimes when we're talking about health and wellness um people want a pill they want the magic bullet you know um, what's the easiest way what's the easiest thing i can do um you suddenly get into a crisis. Um, and you immediately want something done. So you've spent years living your life a certain way. And then, and then your brain goes, I'm done. Right. And you, then you finally make that decision. You want to do something about it right now. Um, and that's where that, you know, that magic bullet mentality comes in. It's just not going to work that way. And especially when, um, so I hear a lot, people will say, oh, I eliminated gluten. I eliminated dairy um, and, or, you know, and it didn't work. But the problem is, is that's, it's, it's a one shot, you know, it's a one shot wonder treatment. You can't just eliminate, you have to repair. You have to look at all the other facets of your health. You have to, you know, are you starting to exercise? Um, are you taking the right nutrients? Um, are you, are you eating the right foods? So you can't just eliminate something and then expect that in a month, two weeks, some people are like, I did it for two weeks and it didn't do anything. And, and, you know, to Howie's point, it takes years to heal. It took years to get you to where you're at. So we have to stop thinking that we can do this in two weeks, two months. Um, you know, I have patients who, I mean, months and months and months 
we were working and then, you know, and like a year, you know, and I'll tell people this is probably going to take about a year. Um, you know, I got a couple right now. They're like, you told me it was going to be over a year. I'm like, yeah, I did, you know, but, um, and I, and I always applaud them because I'm grateful for those people who stuck with me because I'm selling the intangible, right? So you have to have faith that I'm going to be able to guide you in that, in that direction. And, uh, and it's a hard sell sometimes, you know, cause again, people want the magic bullet. So, um, so <laughs> I know, I know exactly. It's too much work. So it does, it is going to take a lot of time to heal. And so you have to recognize that. So don't just go into this thinking, oh, well, Dr. Paula said, if I just don't eat legumes during allergy season, I'll be fine. And then you, you, you know, you stop eating legumes for, you know, two weeks or a month. And you're like, ah, that was hogwash what she said. No, because it's all these deep, deep layers that we are peeling back for you. You, you, again, you have to have faith that it is going to be beneficial for you. Based on that chart alone, you might be able to see some things within yourself that you're like, you know, actually now that I realize um, every time I eat a banana, I get a scratchy throat or, you know, I get a headache or um, you, you, you can start making these connections with your health. It's really about being as aware as possible with all of the things you're doing um, in your life. So Kenny says, good point with many aspects of life. It's taken you up to now to get where you are. So it's going to take a long time to undo it. I know I, I've had people, you know, and they're like, can I still have, I don't know, example, you know, ice cream at night. And I'm like, you've had 50 years of ice cream. No, like you've had plenty. We're done. We're done with ice cream at night. Um, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to shame you if you go get ice cream. You can't be having it every night, you know? Um, so... Ice cream's not, I, I think I probably, I don't know, I might eat ice cream twice in a summer. Um, but that's me. I don't have a sweet tooth. So when I do, you know, when I'm like, ah, oh, I can really use a, you know, really feel like having an ice cream right now. And I'll go and I'll get it and I'll probably, you know, I just take like four or five bites and then, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't even eat the whole thing. But it's, it's, it's satisfying, right? Because if you're doing something every single day, you are feeding your bugs versus if you have it once or twice a year, now it's like, oh man, that felt so good. Oh, that tasted really good. Um, I don't need any more till next year. Okay. So <laughs> she's the, Dr. Hogwash, she's the bean of fallacy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so there are a lot of nutrients that you can take. Um, I'm pretty sure I did a video on that, but, um, but some of the things, um, you know, again, water, 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 water. So eliminating all of the inflammatory foods in, in your diet, um, you know, no soda, my, my top three, no artificial sweeteners, flavors, and colors. And so, and no soda, get rid of that stuff. It is not serving you. And you have to make a decision um, every time you put something in your mouth, whether it is liquid or solid, is this um, healing me or is this killing me? It will take you. It's going to take you in one direction or the other. And you have to decide which direction do you want to go? Um, how he says the lifestyle of eating the right food, wild salmon, trout, veggies, fruit, breads from your local, I'm assuming bakery, dancing and singing is a must. Yes. Um, eat fresh food that you get in your local um, area. Um, I am constantly singing. Um, patients come into the office. I'm constantly singing. I have music on. Um, it's, you know, it's fun. Um, also, one of the things with singing, so not necessarily allergy related, but it can, you know, may help is singing helps to calm the, um, the vagus nerve. So we've talked about the vagus nerve is your rest, digest and repair part of your nervous system. And so when you sing, uh, you stimulate the, the vagus nerve. So, um, yes, good vibrations will keep you healthy. So it vibrates in there and it helps put you into rest, digest, and repair, and take you out of fight or flight. Um, so, so again, like the whole allergy season thing, there definitely are supplements that, um, that you can 
look at using. In fact, um, so I actually have been building out a new online store. So I'm going to drop this here for you guys. Um, and in here, I've put in some protocols and it says like cold and flu, allergy, daily wellness. Um, you can go in there and just look for, you know, things that will be, here we go. There we go. Yes. There you go. And I believe they will ship to Canada, Howie. Um, so, um, so you can go in there and um, create an account for yourself. And then there's, like I say, I have all these protocols set up and I've, I've set up, um, let's see, let me give you some insight. But one of the things I wanted to be able to do was have a place that people could go. Um, so uh, like I have, I have uh, body care, healthy body care, acute pain injury, kids, daily nutrition, digestive support, cold and flu, stress relief, sinus and allergy, um, daily wellness. I have multiple daily wellness ones um, because there's different. So daily wellness in general, daily wellness for women, daily wellness for men, bone health, daily wellness. Um, so go on in there and poke around. I would love to um, have your feedback. And if you um, have any questions, um, you can just, you know, reach back out to me and, uh, we can, you know, set up a call and, and then I can give you some, uh, recommendations. So, um, so yeah, I would, I absolutely would love some feedback because I just went live with it, I think yesterday or Friday. Um, so, uh, I'm like, I'm like, it, it's, it's incredible for me. And I've sent, I've created plans for a couple of people and sent it off to them. And they were like, wow, this is so much easier than your old online store. And, and my, my other online store, it still is fine. Um, it still works, but I'm slowly migrating everybody over to this. So, um, so yeah, um, Bill, Bill Nash, Bill Nash is already in there. Look at that. Thanks, Bill. Um, and let's see. Yes. Uh, where are we? Okay. Yes. Hitting that one note will do it. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So, so really start with your elimination, start with the foods, uh, making sure you're cleaning up your diet, because again, we cannot out supplement a poor diet. It's not going to happen. And then from there, then we can go ahead and we can start layering in different nutrients. And, um, one of the things also is when we're looking at supplementation, I do want to put you on the daily wellness. So what is the, the core daily wellness supplements that you should be taking for basic health? So we, so we start there. Let's, let's lay that landscape. Then we can start putting other things into place because I have to get the basic nutrients in you. We have to eliminate the bad stuff, put the basic nutrients in, and then, then we can start to, to nurture that get things to now heal and, uh, grow the good, the good guys. Um, so, um, so you guys can jump over to the online store and see what I've recommended for, um, for sinus. I have, um, I take quercetin almost daily because I do have mold toxicity. Um, and I'll tell you the last few days has been kind <clears> of, <throat> I'm feeling it. Um, I'm really feeling it. And so I take two quercetin before I even head out the door every day. And quercetin is a natural antihistamine. So um, you want to look for things like that. That is on the new online store. So go check that out. The um, it, When you are taking things like um, Claritin and Zyrtec, taking that just once. So your gut is a, it, it's like a protective mesh and it's very tightly woven and we call those tight junctions and it's designed as a protective barrier to make sure that um, uh, dangerous particulates, bacteria and viruses don't get through that barrier to, to protect you. But what happens is you take one, one Tylenol, one Advil, one Claritin, one, whatever it is, and that goes in and immediately breaks those tight junctions. Now you have holes in the gut. This is what we call leaky gut. So you don't, you know, people are like, oh, I only take um, Avil or Tylenol like once a week. That's enough to do that. So you, you're creating um, a breach 
in the um, in the barrier. And now what happens is you start getting these foreign particles, whole food particles that your body sees as foreign, right? You're not supposed to have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches floating around your bloodstream. So your body looks at that as foreign and it starts to launch an assault. And that's where our autoimmune issues come from. So if you have autoimmune, 100%, you have leaky gut and it needs to be repaired. Um, and that's where, uh, you, you know, we've got to, we got to, you know, look at, do we, do we do a complete food plan? Um, which I, this new site also, I can do food plans for people now very easily. So I'm super excited about that. So, um, I also heard that stuff will affect you. It does. Yeah. It affects your brain. It affects everything. And of course, if you're affecting the gut, you are going to affect the brain for sure. So, um, and we, we have to, we have got to protect our, um, protect our brain. Um, you know, br the, our brain for longevity. Um, thank you so much, Howie. I appreciate it. Um, you know, if we don't have good brain health, we have nothing, nothing. So you have got to take care of your brain. We are Alzheimer's, our dementia. It is, it is at an all time. I mean, this is a true epidemic here in the United States. So if you really want to get to the end of the line with a good, healthy brain, then you can start to clean things up now. Pay attention. You know, um, Howie um, was, you know, pretty public with some of the things he went through and um, and how you did a great job of of starting to really clean up your diet. And um, and I know you're feeling a lot better. And, um, you know, it's just so glad that um, that you you know were able to, like, you know, take the reins and turn it around and. And, you know, a lot of people just, um, won't, you know, won't make that decision. That's really what it is, is what's the decision you need to make in order to get yourself well, in order to live the vibrant life that you deserve. So, um, healthy mind and healthy body makes a healthy decision. I know. And we have to, but we got to go backwards with that. Right. So we have to get people making the healthy decisions first so that they can have the healthy mind and the healthy body. And you know, you got to, um, again, it's time and you have to be patient. And if you want something better at the end of your life, you know, um, my, my friend, Dr. Otto Jenke, um, he just recently also did a Ted talk and he said, um, he said, there's two people at the end of your life and I'll, I'll tell you this story and then I'll, I'll let you guys go. Cause I'm sure Sunday fun day is coming on. There's two people at the end of your life and, um, you're at, your um, granddaughter's wedding. And one of you is up and you're, and you're dancing and you're singing and you're full of joy and you're engaging with everybody and you're, and you're just vibrant and vital and you're having the absolute time of your life, enjoying this beautiful moment with you know, your, your grandchild and your family. And then the other one of you is um, sitting in a wheelchair and um, you got an oxygen tank there and you don't, you, you really wish you could get up and dance, but you can't even really get up and walk. And someone has to push you to the bathroom and someone has to help you get dressed and someone has to help you move around. And you, you don't have a quality of life and vibrancy and vitality. So which one do you want to be at the end of the line? I mean, I want to be dancing and singing until I drop dead, right? So I would say my girlfriend makes fun of me because I would say my dad, my mom dropped dead. Like that was, that's how she was. She was super active, vibrant, vital, and she just up and died. Like that's what we all want. That is what we all want. We don't want to suffer. We don't want to see people suffer. So um, <laughs> am I ignoring you guys? I was trying to tell a story. <laughs> seek knowledge that you don't know, learn new things. Um, the brain is so plastic. Like it's, it's so malleable. So learn new things and, um, and your brain will continue to be, um, to, um, uh, provide for you. So <laughs> Kenny, what are you two doing? The boss, <laughs> I don't even know what's going on children. I, do I have to put you all in timeout? Hey, Jujubee, I didn't see you jump in here. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Um, 
and what you are a hairy bag of salty liquid. So drink your clean water. Yes. <laughs> That's so funny. And we are salt. Make sure you are drinking, you're eating good sea salt. Um, you got to have that good sea salt in there. So, um, all right, you guys, it is seven Oh seven. This girl's brain is about to go. So I need to get my, get my decompression time in. Um, I will see you tomorrow for, um, reset Monday. I apologize. My last Monday went completely sideways and I didn't even get to the office until 10 to 10 and I missed everything. So it was like, I don't know, things just went sideways. So forgive me. And I will, uh, I will see you tomorrow for uh, reset Monday and, um, and then everybody have an amazing week again. Thank you so much, um, for being here for supporting the channel, continue to share so we can continue to grow. And, um, and I love you all for being here and, and helping support the growth. So, all right, have a great week. See ya. Bye. Thanks, Howie. Appreciate it.